This presentation is on books five and six of the Odyssey by Homer. As we continue on through books five and six, we meet a couple of new characters. And again, this may be something that you want to keep track of because there are so many characters uh, and everybody has a different job, a different name. It may be a good idea uh, to keep a family tree, to keep um, just some kind of notes somewhere where you can make connections for the different characters. One of the main new characters is Hermes, who is a messenger of Zeus, and he is known as the messenger god. And then Calypso, who is a nymph who holds Odysseus captive for seven years. And she's also noted in some translations as the maid, uh, the goddess with the flaxen braids, or uh, she's very famous for her hair. Uh, so different um, versions have different descriptions of her, but it's all the same person. And then finally, the main character of Odysseus, who is the epic hero of this narrative. And with that, finally, it's Odysseus. It took us into book five before we actually meet our main character. And remember, in keeping with all of the epic poems, they begin in medias res, so in the middle of things. So we've got to come to a point in the story to where we have to get the backstory or the behind the scenes. So what we've seen so far is Telemachus, and he is with Nestor's son Pisistratus. Um, Telemachus is tired of having the suitors encamped upon his homeland of Ithaca trying to win his mother's hand in marriage. He has called an assembly. He has decided he is going to go out and look for his father, and that's exactly what he's done. He has gone uh, to the different places such as Nestor, to Helen, and to Menelaus to find out word of his father, and this is finally where we get some of the behind the scenes of what has happened um, with Odysseus and it is someone else um, and it, it kind of sort of shifts to a different time but it's it's basically we're not necessarily in real time yet we're just getting the what has happened in the other years leading up to this time when we meet Odysseus. He is known for his steadfast spirit and his endurance. He has not given up on his quest to get home and he is continually pushing to get home regardless of the temptations and regardless of um, the situations that he encounters such as Calypso and the choice is he can stay with Calypso forever and he would basically become immortal or he can give up that immortality and continue on to his wife at home um, but he has to leave Calypso and it has also been ordered by Zeus uh, through Hermes that Calypso must let him go. So he is freed from the static and restless world of the gods. And that's something to note that there is, even though the gods can live forever, there is a lot of um, imprisonment that accompanies that. Whereas in the mortal world, you know that there is an ending. Not everything is the same all of the time. Uh, your situation can change because you are continually striving to avoid death or avoid pain your whole mortal life. Whereas with a god or a goddess as an immortal, it doesn't matter because nothing is ever going to happen to you. So even though he is giving up that mortality, that is in a way a sense of freedom for him. So if you're trying to keep up with the different themes that we have encountered, um, throughout our stories of the Iliad and the Odyssey. That is another theme that you can notate. This of um, the mortals versus the immortals. This freedom in being an, an, a mortal. And you could argue that, that there is more freedom in being a mortal versus an immortal. And then give different uh, examples of the characters to support that. Um, in our discussion of one of the immortals, we have... Uh, met Calypso. She assumes that Odysseus will remain with her because she is an immortal, because she is extremely beautiful, and she cannot understand uh, the importance of internal beauty over external beauty, and that is what we see in Penelope. She has this internal beauty that is 
uh, never ceasing. Whereas being a mortal, being a human, she is continually deteriorating, breaking down as every mortal is. Whereas Calypso is not like that. And she is angry and believes everyone is against her because she is being forced to let Odysseus go because she earnestly believes that he is her husband. Something else as far as essay topics or themes that you could keep track of or make a compare or contrasting essay would be that over internal beauty versus external beauty or Penelope versus Calypso in the way that one is quote or unquote more of a wife than the other. And you could also compare that with the wife of Agamemnon. If you remember that little triangle, that little family triangle that we discussed earlier in one of the previous lectures of Agamemnon, his wife Clytemnestra, their son Orestes, and the demise that fell upon Clytemnestra and Agamemnon in comparison to Odysseus, his wife Penelope, and their son Telemachus. Some main literary um, devices that we have encountered in this are one of the most notorious and important in uh, an epic is the epic simile. And remember, a simile is using like or as to describe a certain character, noun, action. And in uh, this, in book five uh, and six, the pebbles clinging to the octopus's tentacles as the pebbles are cling to the octopus's tentacles gives a vi vivid negative impression of the skin being torn from Odysseus's fingers because we see him being um, shipwrecked and, and washed upon the shore and it's a it's a very tumultuous time for him another simile that we get is the smoldering log buried in ashes to preserve its hidden spark of fire. And this gives a clear perception of Odysseus's flickering spark of life being preserved in the bed of leaves as he has washed up on the shores of uh, the Phaeacians. And then we have a father being set free from sickness. As a father is set free from sickness, so is Odysseus, um, his feeling when he finally sees land. He is get, given hope just as a father would be given hope as he is set free from sickness. So these are two or just two or three um, in, the, in, the, in the story, in the narrative, they are much lengthier. And so this is basically just a much more condensed version of it. As we encounter book six, another new character is Nausicaa, who is the princess of the Phaeacians who greets Odysseus once he has escaped from Odysseus's, I mean Calypso's island of Ogygia. He has now gone through a terrible uh, storm. He has lost everything he has gone from, and we will meet the other ship mates earlier, but he is down to the only one left, the only soldier of his group of Ithacans who has left after the Trojan War was over, and he is the only one of his group that will return home. So we have Nausicaa, then we have her father Alcinous, not to be confused with Altinous, who is one of the suitors, but Alcinous, king of the Phaeacians, and then her mother, Alcinous's wife, Arete, who is queen of the Phaeacians. And the little picture you see here is an artistic rendition of Odysseus as he is washed up unclothed upon the shore, giving the ball back to the young princess Nausicaa. So it was a very comical time, very embarrassing time for Odysseus. Some of the elements that we see in this chapter are that of, as I just said, comedy. Odysseus's embarrassment when he is approaching the young girls. This serves as a way to lighten the overall tone of the book, which has been very dark, very heavy, um, as Odysseus almost died in the previous book. This sense of embarrassment, the young girls are extremely embarrassed also at the sight of this old naked man that has just washed up on the shore. And Odysseus is trying to do everything he can to avoid the situation. And then we have a comparison of that of the lion and the sheep to Odysseus and the girls. So just as we have what could be um, taken as uh, someone who is older, who has been out on the prowl, on the kill, fighting this war in comparison to the sheep, which are um, uh, representative of the girls that he, Nausicaa and her maidens that she, uh, that he encounters, that they are very innocent, very um, 
following very naive. Um, so that's a very good comparison with of Odysseus and the girls to the lion and the sheep.